The dust has settled on the day. It was an exciting day for Michigan with the Tony Alford news. But with that, we are doing some house cleaning because we are finally getting back to your questions, the things that you wanted to know. This comes from last week, but weirdly, almost all very prescient. So we're going to answer your questions on the Michigan mailbag this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday night. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Holt, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. I forgot to sort these correctly. Uh, it takes a lot of work to get everything in order here for the, uh, for the mailbag. But uh, nonetheless, takes two seconds. There we go. Let's start with our leaders and best. Uh, Starting with James Crudup at James Crudup 6. Are you going to play the new college football game, the EA Sports game coming out this summer? Absolutely. However, I don't think that I I never got as into it because it was just harder for me. Like Madden (laughs) was able to find my little glitches. And I haven't played. uh, I I didn't play the EA college football game when I kind of actually had some semblance of understanding of football. So um, uh, I, I will play it. Uh, I played Madden that came out, the first one that came out for PS5. I think I had to buy a PS4 copy, and then they allowed you to upgrade to the PS5 version. So 2021, that summer or whatever it was. And um, I played that for a little while. You got to play as a couple college teams, not Michigan. I think I ended up being LSU. Uh, but uh, I, I am looking forward to it. However, just the way I am with video games, especially the sports games, it's funny because all I used to play were sports games. That was it. I did not play anything other than sports games. And the pandemic happened, and I got really into story-driven games. And then the last like two years, I haven't really played anything. I think the only game I've I've taken to completion in the last year and a half would be uh, Horizon Forbidden West. But I, I've started multiple other games. But, um, I mean, I, I was playing a game a week, essentially, during the pandemic because there was nothing else to do. That's how I gained a lot of weight, too, So because I just sat in bed and treated that like that was my job. So, um, I do have a PS portal for some reason. I don't know why. I, I think I got it just strictly because they were hard to get. Uh, so, I could see myself more so having something on in the background uh, and uh, just kind of playing away. That's something that would probably happen. But I've got other games I've also got to like get into a little bit more. Like I, I got the Avatar game, uh, the newer God of War game. Uh, I haven't finished Star Wars, the new one. Uh, there was another one I haven't finished that was. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty far into the Star Wars game. That one I just stopped, but not because there was like a hard part like I did with the first one. I stopped playing it because I was like I'm getting too close to the end and I'm not ready for it to finish. So, Josh Barr at Jadicky. When will we get a chance to start interviewing or having press availability with the staff now that it's basically finalized? Um, I, I would imagine sometime around spring practice, but you never know with Michigan. I'm just curious to see if the, you know, the setup's going to be the same, right? Because like I've only covered the Jim Harbaugh-led Michigan team. Now, Sharon Moore, being his protege, might just say, let's leave it all exactly the same. And I would actually probably expect that, whereas like uh, before me, uh, I, I'd heard about, you know, Brady Hoke and the way that they structured that and all of that stuff. Um, but now that everyone is officially finalized, right? Like Tony Alford actually got announced today, which was somewhat surprising, uh, given that it took a month for Wink Martindale and them. Uh, I think, uh, I, I mean, I would hope that soon, sooner than later, but I would imagine they're going to wait like a week into spring practice. I don't know. We'll see. My brother in metal, Michael Wolf at MWolf21, with a lot of talent and leaders leaving, who do you expect to step up and be the vocal leaders of the team? I think Quentin Johnson coming back, I think he very well could be one. Um, uh, it, it's a little harder because a lot of the stars are juniors, um, and I feel like they like, they prefer senior captains. But, I mean, I mean, I could see a Colston Loveland or a Mason Graham being a vocal leader, but they're kind of quiet guys anyway, so I'm not really sure. Uh, Donovan, uh, feels like a guy, Donovan Edwards feels like a guy that would probably be one Giovanni El Hadi. Um, and, uh, I'm just trying to th- kind of think through the roster real fast. Th- those would be my, th- I, I, I could see them having four captains this year and having those two 
Um, Will Johnson, if they do do a junior, would be my op, uh, option there. And Rod Moore, I'd go the two juniors on defense, and uh, and two seniors on offense. But oh, it's very difficult. I'm talking team captains, by the way, purposely here. Um, it's hard to really tell, right? Because I wouldn't have picked Mikey Sainra still as being like a two year captain and all of that stuff. I wouldn't have picked him, right? Uh, like in 2019. Maybe not even 2021. Uh, Jonathan Joseph at J Joseph 2156. Now the coaching staff is set. Who do you think will recruit which area? Um, I would imagine that you're going to see, uh, see Alfred take over Ohio. Um, because, I mean, he was already at Ohio State. He's from Ohio originally. Obviously, they'll also they'll do like they kind of do. Is you'll, you'll see guys uh, also uh, work their position group as well. But uh, Ron Bellamy will will likely tag team Detroit with um, who am I blanking on? <laughs> oh, he'll he'll also take the South, like Louis parts of the South, Louisiana in particular, because he's from Louisiana. I am blanking on uh, Greg Scruggs. I think would would be the other one I would expect to hang around to the Detroit area. Uh, Scruggs, I think, would also be, uh, he could also be a, one that would do some Ohio recruiting. Um, Lamar Morgan also, I think, would also be a Louisiana, along with Ron Bellamy. I could see them kind of tag teaming Texas as well. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's, I'd say Kirk Campbell, DMV. Um where where are we at here? Grant Newsom, uh Eastern Seaboard. Uh and uh I'm sure I, I'm sure I just got it all messed up. Brian Jean Marie, other parts in the South. I don't know. Uh finishing us out in segment one, Spencer Whitmore. That's Spencer Whitmore. Who has time to comment on other teams' mailbags? You must be big time now. That's because there was a I don't even I couldn't even see it because I had blocked the dude because it's just deep. I don't like to block people, but when you clutter up something that I got to copy and paste and all that stuff, you know, that's why I, I hate when people just have like random superfluous comments in the mailbag because it just it takes a, a little bit more preparation for the mailbag. Um, and there was a Buckeye that just decided that he was going to argue with some of our leaders and best in the comments. Uh, he decided, I think, initially to, to say something and then it just kind of went off the rails. So muted. Or the conversation blocked that guy, but yeah, no, it's. I don't think it's a big time thing. I think it's anytime you're any anyone related to Michigan and say anything about Michigan, they just get fired up, right? So it is say la vie. All right, we're gonna continue on with the others. There's plenty coming here, and we're gonna get to those in just a moment. But before we do this week's Mark Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Now, the Houston Cougars, a team that Jordan Poole single-handedly defeated some time ago, can only be described as the Armada. The top-seeded team is, is as hardcore as it gets out there, so no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12, that is certainly impressive in and out of itself. So you can take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Really wanted to work in some Michigan basketball into that. Michigan is currently playing. I am not watching, but I do have it on in the other room. I can barely see it. I had to kind of snake my way to see. They are down by two at the moment. It's Penn State in the uh, one of two play-in games. Rutgers, the team that beat Michigan by 20-something. Uh, they, uh, they lost in their first round. So there it is. All right, let's get to the uh, Victor's Valley and starting with I'm not the one at William Cawthorn 9. Michigan isn't big on pay for play, but isn't the one more year fun pay for play? No, no, no. Pay for play is a, it's a little bit different, right? Because it's we're going to drop a bag of cash and then you're going to come to our school. The one more year fun, while it has some of those tenants, right? They're, they're people who are already in school. And they're like, it's, I mean, okay, so maybe they don't have to do anything. So in a way it is kind of, but I mean, it's not the same, right? It's not like, 
inducement, it's retention. So that's where it's a little bit different. But yeah, it kind of is. Um, but you kind of can't get around it now because that's just what NIL has become. Uh, if Tuttle was QB2, does that automatically make him QB1 because he beat out everyone who was on the roster now? No, but that's... I think, uh, and he would actually probably be a team captain, former captain at Indiana. Uh, I forgot about him for a minute. Um, but at, at the same time, I, I think they'll just go with whoever has got the best upside, right? And I think that he's steady. He could, he could be QB1. He absolutely could be. Uh, I'm still looking at Alex Orgy and Jaden Denegal as that being the battle. Personally, that's what I think. But just because they're, they're I, I think that, Tuttle has a higher floor, but his ceiling is much lower than the the others. I think that the others have a much higher ceiling. But I wouldn't be surprised if Tuttle came in and had a Jake Rudock looking year, right? Like maybe it's it's just okay for the first however long. Maybe he loses to Texas, much like Rudock lost to Utah, but it's close. And and then by the uh, the, the middle of the year, suddenly he's throwing for three three hundred yards. It would not surprise me in the least. They need receivers though. I just don't feel good about the receiver group. Uh, does Michigan get to go to the White House? I would imagine so. So uh, I would imagine I'll get to go as well. That's the case. And uh, I hope so. Because that will just be uh, something very different. Uh, David G. Van Reenen at Nexilo 7. Uh, hi, Isaiah. This is the same question I had last time. What are your ideas on the running backs coach? I wonder if there's another Michigan man coaching running backs out there. Um, I just included that just because obviously we, uh, we didn't get to you last time, but, um, uh, obviously they got Tony Alford. They got a Colorado state man. My mom must be so proud. I haven't talked to her about it yet. <laughs> Gotta try to work that in tomorrow. Sean Stites at Sean Stites 16. Do you believe that Mike Hart felt passed over plus his personal issues being too much to remain or was he truly undervalued by the new staff? I felt he, he was invaluable at assessing and developing talent at a vital position in Michigan's football's renaissance. It's sad. I mean, it is sad. I think that everything you said is probably, I don't know for sure. You know, no, no one that I know of has actually talked to him and been able to give a concrete answer as to why he's, you know, was on leave of absence, why he's not back, all that stuff. But I do believe he felt passed over and I don't know if his personal issues is, are extraneous from that they might be they might not be i don't know i'm not going to speculate beyond what i did but uh he was an absolutely wonderful developer but i i think that tony alford has done an amazing job recruiting head and shoulders above mike hart and uh he's been a decent developer as well um i mean honestly i i've seen ohio state fans trying to say he wasn't even good and good riddance all that kind of stuff that's just sour grapes right like he Really did a great job with Ezekiel Elliott in his final year. J.K. Dobbins was absolutely a, it was an absolute monster. Travion Henderson, outside of playing against Michigan, has been great. He scared me going into both of those games. And, I mean, that was my one key was slow him down, stop him. And Michigan did exactly that. Um, but uh, they also don't have the offensive line play. So I wonder if that's uh, part of where he's looking at it and like, okay, Michigan runs the ball a lot more. I've got some guys that I can work with behind a good offensive line. This is going to be a lot more fun for me. I want. I feel like that's probably going to be the case. Clark at Blue for Life 8. Do you think the, uh, the Maze jerseys will ever make it to another game? I'd like to see with the blue pants rather than the all Maze uniform. I'd love to see that. Uh, I know that they tried in 2021 against Penn State, and Penn State said no, and then they went with the really nice uh, look of the white jerseys, the Maze pants, and the Maze accessories. Yeah, I do think that they'll try it again at some point, and I'd, I would much prefer that, that over the all maze. But, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, James Kovaleski at Coach underscore Kovo. How would you compare your impressions of Mike McDonald versus Jesse Minter in the role of defensive coordinator? On the outside, they seem very similar, but curious what you observe covering the team. I mean, very similar. I would say Jesse is a little bit more calm and collected, right? He's not like... I mean, Mike wasn't like, didn't seem to be like a yeller either from what I could tell from the sidelines. But I mean, Mike's a little bit more of a fired up, fiery guy, I think. But they're both relatively calm young guys. Uh, very heady, very smart. They're very similar in a lot of ways. So it'll be interesting seeing just how different Wink Martindale is. Uh, the Recon Raider uh, at Hamstand87. How big of a win is it to you that because you're on more limited attrition, is how much of how big of a win is it to you that because show more limited attrition on the roster? Uh, also, start cussing out J Book and Dave Biddle more. I only call him a blank and troll so many times. 
Um, all right, so here's the here's the thing. I'll address the last part. Jay Books come at me. I don't like uh, him uh, coming at me like that. I don't know him though. Biddle's my guy though. I know it's gonna pain you to hear that. Like I give Biddle a hug every time I see him, which is only once a year at Big Ten Media Day. So he's my guy. Um, because you know when you're working professionally with each other, you're gonna you're gonna have you're going to have a little bit more of a congenial relationship. It's not going to really matter the team. And, uh, I, I, I like Biddle as a dude. I do. I, I, th- I think he's a fun guy. Uh, book, I think has taken some unnecessary shots, um, and all of that, but it is a huge win that Sharon has, um, limited the attrition, right? Because you look at Alabama, you look at Washington, you look at some of these other schools who have just lost a ton. Ohio state was losing a bunch before they went on a, on a, you know, shopping spree and all of that. So, um, I, I think that that helps, right? It helps push things forward. Mark Z at Mark Zimke. We've been talking about the Debo Samuel role in the Michigan offense for years now. And if you look at Donovan Edwards, he is one inch and five pounds away from matching Debo Samuel and probably faster. If there ever was a time, this would be it. Do you think they could really pull it off this year with him? Uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Who knows how much the offensive philosophy will change? I mean, they've talked about it and then just went away from it. AJ Henning. The, the year that they spent all this time talking about him, they only like really like attempted to get the ball to him like five times. So it was no surprise that he didn't fulfill that role because Michigan was just like, we're just not going to use this guy. Donovan Edwards could be so vital in the passing game and they just have not really. I think that's your best way to win. He's probably your best receiver and he's also a running back and you can put another running back on the field and just do a whole bunch of stuff. I think that, with the the lack of receiving options in my eyes, I think that they could really do a lot with him, but we'll see. Perry Mitchell at Perry Mitchell 08. We've seen a decent amount of Davis Warren. Exactly how open do you think this QB competition is? Because he's usually the fourth QB mentioned when you hear about it, but he's looked uh, more than serviceable in his time, in my opinion. I think he's kind of fallen down that depth chart because he was number two in 2022 once Cade went down. Um, and I just think he fell behind the others. I think it certainly you could rise up. I think the QB competition is going to be hundred percent open. I don't think that there's any, any chance of anyone even cementing themselves as a starter in the spring um, as it is. I think that it's wide, wide open. So we'll see. Finishing us out in segment two, Anton says me to Mangala says me to Mangala, which new coach are you most excited for and why? Um, Wink Martindale. <laughs> I think that it's, if you would have told me, if you would have told any of you, like in 2021, instead of getting Mike McDonald, oh, they got Wink Martindale. Everyone would have been going nuts. And when Mike McDonald left and Wink Martindale was ousted from Baltimore and they said, well, Mike McDonald's leaving, but Wink Martindale's coming in. Everyone would have been ecstatic about that. Even last year, I think people would have been excited. Jesse was like, hey, you know what? I got another opportunity. And they were like, you're getting Wink Martindale. I think people would be ecstatic. The problem is Jesse Minter just had the best Michigan defense probably of all time. I think it was better than the 97. So, Wink Martindale. Uh, behind that, Tony Alford, because he uh, makes Ohio State people sad now. All right, we got the Blue Crew coming up. We're going to get to them here in just one moment. But before we do, say goodbye to Busted Brackets, because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset uh, or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. $200 is even better than the $150 from before. $200 that you can use on point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. So just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Remember like eight minutes ago when I said that Michigan was down by two? They've scored two, and Penn State's scored ten in that time frame. So that's not surprising. This would be a good day to use the plate PS portal once I'm done with all of this. Just sit and do something else and have the game on in the background. The last, potentially the last Juwan Howard game, um, which I'll be sad to see him go as a dude. Um, I, I was not close at all. I had none of Jim Harbaugh's personal contact info, whereas I do have that uh, of Joan Howard. I don't use it, but I do have it. So 
it's uh it's just funny um no, it's not funny it's sad it's sad is what it is um anyhow all right we've got the blue crew coming up which always is a little bit more of a rapid fire so let's get to it so we don't make this a 35 minute episode uh michigan football enthusiast at milo Myco kyle three rather when will we see some spring practice photos and vids like all the other programs in the country have started putting out? Well, when it starts, it doesn't, hasn't started yet. It starts on Monday. So after that, probably starting Monday. Kanji at ESPZS. How will the Wolverines do next year, in your opinion? I'm completely torn. I could see it being anywhere from a 7-5 and five to an 11-1 and one season. Completely torn. Depends on the buy-in. If you see guys that were elite stay elite, the Mason Graham and Kenneth Grants of the world. Uh, if Donovan and Edwards returns to form to more like 2022 than 2023, if uh, at least one receiver breaks out, they get a quarterback. I think the line play on both sides is going to be really good. I think the defense could keep a minute every game. But, I mean, we've seen a defense that keeps a minute in every, every game in 2017, and they're still 8-4 and four in the regular season, 8-5 and five overall. So quarterback play is key. So they get good quarterback play. Yeah, there's a there's a good shot that they could be a lot better than people think. But if they don't, might uh might go downhill in a hurry. Ralph Wolf at Ralph Wolf nineteen sixty eight. Does Michigan go get a big wide receiver in the next portal? Someone six four because we need a couple of those guys. Uh I do have an indication from someone I spoke to uh close to the recruiting department that they will try to target someone like that. But who's gonna be available? That's the question. I mean they they got some serviceable guys late, right? Dalen Baldwin. Um, in 2021. Uh, so I guess it just depends on who's available. You know, it's, and I don't think Michigan's going to play dirty or anything. So that's, they're probably not going to tamper and get a guy to be, to leave that way. Coleman national champ at J Coleman 67, which the four quarterbacks in the room have the advantage heading into spring practice with all the Frederick Moore hype. Why did we not see him last year? And do we hit the portal to find CB two or is he on the current roster? Uh, the, I, th- I still think Alex Orgy, but kind of because he got that J.J. McCarthy freshman year treatment in his sophomore year. I still think that Alex Orgy has got that opportunity. He didn't throw a pass, but I think that, you know, they're kind of acclimating him because I think that he's got a lot of upside. Uh, Frederick Moore, uh, freshman. I've, I've told you before, freshman wide receivers. I know we saw a lot of Samaj Morgan. It, it's a little bit more of an uphill battle to get those types of guys uh, on the field in year one. You expect to see wide receivers typically break out in year two. That's what I thought about Tyler Morris. Didn't really break out, got his first career touchdown in the Rose Bowl. But um, certainly, he could he could break out. And as far as the portal for CB, CB2, uh, they could have him on the roster. There's a lot of guys that I had heard uh, going into fall camp last year. A lot of those younger guys, it was in between the ears. It wasn't athletic ability uh, that was kind of holding him back and why they went out and got Josh Wallace. So if, uh, you know, some of these guys, Miles Pollard and... Um, Cody Jones, if they can kind of figure it out, right? Like the in, you know, the the mind stuff, the head stuff, they can figure it out. They they've got just as much of an opportunity. Jaden McBurrows, they've got just as much of an opportunity as anyone. But I wouldn't be surprised if they look in the portal for a ringer. But I I, I still I think that they are in a great spot defensively at the current moment. Mike from Michigan at Mike A fifty one. When is Wetzel gonna drop the article? Never. Uh, that's a question. Never. I wouldn't say never. I don't know where he stands. I haven't talked to, I've never talked to Dan Wetzel. I've talked to people who talked to Dan Wetzel. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> here's the thing. I know that they, that everyone was kind of putting out some stuff that wasn't exactly fully vetted, but when it comes to the rebuttal, they're going to put out stuff that is fully vetted if they can connect all the dots. The problem is, is with everything that I've heard about Ohio State and Catapult and all of this stuff is that they at least knew how to cover their tracks a little bit. But, I mean, Dan did put out something about Catapult while we were in Los Angeles for the Rose Bowl. You know, and obviously there was all that stuff, you know, like, oh, Michigan had practice film. No, it wasn't Michigan. So it's, um, I think that they'll have to have their, their T's crossed, I's dotted. Uh, I know one of the people who was working on it, I, I said this before, um, and, uh, they're no longer at the, the place that they were. They, they were like, I feel like I have all the information 
that leads me to know that Ohio State did what they're being accused of. The problem is, is I don't have enough to go to print with it. So that's kind of the problem right now. So could be never, right? Just the same way that we always heard of, like the bag man. Oh, this guy got this offer. This guy got that offer. And either people didn't care or was never proved. I don't know. I'm not him. I couldn't tell you what he's got. I had heard he was pretty close, uh, but that was back in like November and haven't really had anything since then. Rahul Misra at Misra Ra uh, one. <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, why are state legislatures in the South so much more active on NIL and saying stuff, uh, saying stuff it to the NCAA? Oh, saying stuff it rather the NCAA than the state of Michigan. Well, Michigan state legislature tried with the big, they, they sent something out, right? To the big 10 and then the big 10 said, we don't care. And then everyone just kind of folded. I think part of it is Michigan has to be willing to fight. And it wasn't, I thought it was a mistake, but, um, kind of surprised just based off of like the conversations I was having, you know, like the, the nuclear option, leaving the big 10 and all of those things that I alluded to that eventually made their way to the light. And, um, and then the, the Chris Partridge stuff hit and they folded like a chair in the wind. Anyway, King Lion at the house of Lion, what job will Denard have in the reorganized recruiting department or is he leaving? I haven't heard anything about him leaving, but I don't know. I mean, it's none of that stuff's really kind of been announced and it usually isn't necessarily announced, but, um, as far as I know, he's sticking around Alex orgy season at Wolverines 35, seven. Uh, 37, sorry, 507. Does Quentin Johnson returning help the quarter, uh, cornerback rotation, freeing up Zeke Berry to stay at nickel? Uh, and do any of the cornerbacks in the roster have the potential to make a spring leap and grab the CB2 spot? And if so, who has the best shot? I think the two I mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, well, three, will add, uh, you know, Jade McBurrows, Miles Pollard, Cody Jones have the best shot. And I do think it does. I, I, get, I guess the question is, is what do you want to do with Zeke Berry? And, uh, you know, obviously Keon Sab would have played that nickel role. But, uh, I mean, we'll see. I don't know how many changes, you know, there will or will not be under Wink Martindale. Uh, continued, is Michigan ever going to fire back at Ohio State and the Big Ten teams that were smearing us to the conference? Uh, no, I, I don't think. I think that they, they had their best shot. I mean, you have to keep in mind some of the things that reporters did put out there, uh, the collusion and all of that, that at least initiated from Michigan. But... Uh, I, I mean, they they know, right? But the prop, they're in the same issue. They have the same issues as everyone else. They don't have dead to rights. They're like, we know what happened. We don't have every piece of the paper trail that needs to, to happen, right? So all the noise of retaliation ended when Harbaugh took the suspension deal, which I alluded to earlier. I'm sure Ward considers it closed, but are there donors who will keep fighting? Um, I don't think that Ward necessarily considers it closed, but I also don't know that there are any donors who are fighting at the moment. There were some. You can make that what you will. You connect some dots of some things that happened, say, around Maryland weekend. Uh, but uh, they currently are not fighting anymore. Sean at Trillwell92, what role could you see for running back Cole Cabana this year? Uh, I mean, they could use him similar to how, <coughs> excuse me, you would hope that they would use Donovan Edwards. But who knows, right? He's, he's still kind of behind, I think, three guys. So we'll see. Jason Drieger at Detroit 8008. When is more expected to get his first recruit? You never know in recruiting. Let's say probably within the next uh, month, probably. Finishing us out before <coughs> I start going on this coughing fit and then I'm getting for no reason. Hammer 87 at Jeff Decker 12. Is Fred Jackson still around? I believe so, but I don't know. All right, that's going to do it because I can't breathe. <coughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. Peace.